Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Dishonor 2, and more specifically, a bloody quick way through Dishonor 2, where we're still trying to complete the entire game without any powers and by just rampaging through this game as a bit of a psychotic mad woman. But so last time we uh, cleared out Ademeyer Institute, and today we're gonna try and get Sokolov get back from Kirin Chindosh, the mad inventor for Luca Abele. Jindosh is important to the Duke's inner circle. The Grand Guard watches his mansion, and they'll call down the entire city if they find out who you are. I'll make sure they don't. You said there's a wall of light cutting off access to the carriage station? Yes, but there's a black market shop nearby. They sell on the sly. Ever use a rewiring tool? Corvo taught me the theory. Good. Get past the wall of light. Then ride the carriage to where Jindosh lives. And there's a reason people are afraid of his mansion. I'll get it done. I'm gonna take care of this crazy man and his clockwork soldiers, then bring Sokolov back. He means a lot to me. So Sokolov means a lot to Megan Foster. And uh, yeah, chapter four, the clockwork mansion. It's probably the longest chapter of the game because it contains the two areas before we actually m reach the mansion. The first of which is the carriage station, uh, which is a bit of a hassle because we can't enter, as Megan said already, we can't enter the building normally. So there's still one over there, but I think if I just go in here, I can just murderize, murderize this guy. So there's a wall of light blocking entrance to the carriage station and of course a lot of guards in there as well but over here there's a black market who can sell us a rewire tool which will allow us to change the uh well the functionality of the wall of light so it destroys guards and all us but first off the black market i need a tool that can rewire a wall of light the kind the grand guard uses and i'd prefer not to explain myself I can help you out, but not right now. Don't even linger here. I'm supposed to get a visit from Paolo, someone you don't want to meet. Come back later. Understood. So, we, go. we can do business another time. Paolo is a very interesting say. character because, as I said at the beginning of this series, I'm still missing three trophies, one of which is actually killing Paolo three times because Paolo is a bit of a peculiar man, as you'll see in a second. And there we have Paolo and his henchmen. Short blades. Looking for new swords. Morley steel. I know what you mean. Do you? Because last time you gave me some backwater foundry. Garbage! That wouldn't hold an edge. And snapped against Grand Guard armor. I got taken on that deal too. But I'll make it up to you, Paolo. Pop off maybe 10%? 30. Because I like you. By next week. That's fair. I made a bad faith trade and I regret it. You'll have the cutters, I promise. So Paolo is the leader of the Howlers, a band of, uh, well, kind of mercenaries who like to howl. They're, yeah, just basically bandits. I'm just gonna wait until they leave the building again. Because I could kill them now, but then I think the black market will shut down. So just give me a second when they leave. And there they go. So, we got two new upgrades because of the uh, blueprints we picked up. Hardened Bolt and Incendiary Bolts. And of course, Hardened Bolt. Oh, okay, she was really bored. This is what I have for upgrading your equipment. I'm gonna go for Hardened Bolts uh, immediately, because bolts that inflict more damage are gonna come in really handy. It's, and it's one of the only upgrades I actually want to have for this playthrough. And then we're gonna go with another charge for the Stun Mine, which is gonna come in handy in this mission even. And then, of course, we need the Rewire Tool. And I'm gonna get the key to unlock the ticket booth as well. Because I think I'm gonna be able to enter there as well. So there we go. Think of me again. Pretty much everything I needed, so let's head back out. So Paolo and his bandits are actually in this little alley over here. So we can just kill them off if we want to. And since I want to kill him three times, I'm actually gonna do that. We don't have anything fancy yet. So I'm just gonna try and see which one is Paolo. I think the left one is Paolo. So if I just... Uh, take him out like that. And he turns into a bunch of rats. And there we go. Ooh, that was in his face. Where is she? Where is she? 
And there we go, in the throat. Oh my god, I killed that guy with a shot to the... I, I stuffed my sword in his throat. Yeah, it was definitely bloody. So yeah, Paolo is kind of protected somehow. So if you kill him, he turns into a swarm of white rats, which is of course really, really peculiar, but uh, not something we'll be dealing with anytime soon. So let's head back to the guard office. So the station itself has a few entryways. We could go around the back and there's an entryway over there. We could rewire the wall of light as we want to, as we're supposed to by the game, but I wanna try something else. So going through the back allows us to go into this door, but apparently that's blocked. Wait, what? Why would that be blocked? That's not normal. Let's get up there. So since I don't want to go through the front door because I want to keep my rewiring tool, let's go through the other way. There we go, let's break open the door and get to the top floor of this building, which houses another painting. But more importantly, gets us pretty close to the roof of the station, which is uh, another way to get in. And probably the easiest way to get in. And just get a few more coins and I think there's another bone charm right over here while we're passing around. There we go, let's break that open and get the black bone charm leech cuts. I think I'm not going to even use that. There we go, let's get on top of the roof slowly. So the roof is actually the easiest way to get in, but I didn't actually realize that we could access this without uh, powers as well. Because there's one window open over here, and it's right next to where we need to be. Just getting the hardened bolts ready, and then we can actually just drop down on one of those guards. Probably the because I think there's two guards getting out of the... yeah. There we go. Um, there we go, and let's just try and take this guy out, there we go. So right now we're inside of the station, which means we get straight access to the carriage itself, which those two guys actually came from, and yeah, that's pretty much it I think, so let's just ride the carriage onto the next area, because we want to go through this game quicker. And quicker, and quicker, so to the Upper Aventa District, please. There we go. So that's part one of the Clockwork Mansion chapter. But as we're going along, and we're going higher and higher, because you can see, kind of see the mansion over there already, the white building between the trees. That's the mansion itself where we need to go. But uh, there's actually another obstacle in our way. Look at that. It's a lovely building, though. It's one of the cooler levels in the game. And not just because it looks cool, mansion from here. but I actually Page locked off here. I'll have to unlock the gate. Uh, this should not take long, because actually the code to opening this up is actually right next to this building. If we can get in here. Um. And... I God damn it. Suspicious. There goes the head. And then should I use another uh, a stun mine? No, I think I'm just gonna go. Are you serious? Jesus Christ! Yeah. Well, it's not exactly bloody, but that was a horrifying animation. So I think I accidentally activated the entire guardhouse, but let's just murder these guys one by one as they stupidly just come and check on their buddies. There we go. Goodbye. Which is fine by me, because I actually was thinking about how I could uh, get past a few of the guards. I heard another door. Just gonna close this door. Oh god. Did he see me go in here? He most definitely did. But I countered him immediately. Thank you, veteran. Goodbye, side alley key. I don't think I'm actually going to need the side alley key. This this area is a bit bigger than you actually need to progress. Because if we go in here, I don't think anybody will be here. So I can just get the light pouch and the boat charm. And then the key to the door is supposed to be right here, I think. Well, I could have sworn the code was inside of this building, but must have actually missed it. I can actually take out... The wall of light. 
and then just keep going higher. Because now, of course, the guards are going to come into this building and try to check out why all of their friends are dead. I think it might actually be in this room. The top room of this building. Yeah, the new gate code. There we go. 773. Easy peasy. And now, of course, I've lured a bunch of soldiers inside of the building for no reason. Other than to... Uh, the fuck is going on here? Just serve as cannon fodder. Where the hell is this guy? I can hear him walking around. You know what? I know the code. The killer got another one. So he's just finding all the corpses one by one. I'm just gonna go in here and enter the code. No need to kill too many of these guys. Seven, 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 three. There we go. And then let's just get back into the garage. I heard somebody calling me. They're saying I'm gonna kill you for this. Uh, I'm going to Clockwork Mansion. I'm just gonna wave as we go by. Bye! So, the Clockwork Mansion is a very intricate, intricate level because the entire building is uh, actually not just housing the Grand Inventor to the Duke, but he actually designed the entire place. Uh, and he's a bit of a madman. The mansion has a strange beauty to it, but all such places must eventually come to ruin. Yeah, and let's make sure of that. Jindosh, it's time to pay for what you've done, and maybe I can find Sokolov. So, our uh, mission objective is twofold this time. We need to take out Kirin Jindosh, and on the other hand, find Sokolov and rescue him from the building. Um, and as we enter this building, it's really weird. There's like no real opening or door anyway, except for this very, very curious lever. So, uh, let's pull this. And that lifts us up. Look at what this does. So now... We need to be careful. Because there we have a clockwork soldier. And there we go. That's why I wanted to use the rewiring tool. Because we can rewire the clockwork soldiers to do our bidding. And we can open up the door, and now we have a bit of a, a murdery, stabby clockwork soldier at our disposal. I'm just going to use them as a distraction. There's actually a window over here I can actually use to get through. Yeah, there we go. I'm just going to use the robot as a distraction. There we go. And now we're actually in between the walls, because this entire house is configurable, as you saw at the entrance there. It looks uh, really, really cool, cool from a few angles. Um, Stand clear. I'm bringing up the arc pylon. Okay, that's annoying. So King Jindal's now knows where we are, and that's why they uh, changing the configuration of the room to actually set up an arc pylon, which is annoying because I don't think I can actually get close to it without dying. I think it's taking out some rats. Okay, so there's one guard in this room, which shouldn't be that big of a problem. Uh, aside from the fact that I can't actually get very, very close right now. Ah, you've encountered my arc pylon. The electrical discharge from my clockworks makes this obsolete. I keep this one out of nostalgia for Sokolov's dated designs. Can I? I ooh! Okay. I didn't. I didn't. It, it just died. I don't have anything to do with this. Because it died entering the building. Can I actually destroy that arc pylon? So I know I can't activate. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, preferably I would have gone through this room and into that elevator to get higher, but that's not an option anymore. I don't think I can get to that guard either, but maybe if I move around the room... There is another lever here, and I don't know what this does. But it does open up the room next to this. I think that gives me far enough from the arc pylon to just... Okay. 
There we go. Can't do anything here. And yeah, I'm not just gonna I'm just not gonna take the risk. So let's just get into the elevator. So there's nobody inside of the elevator, but I've never done this mission with uh Jindosh actually realizing that you are in the building. So I never heard his chastising before. I can't get up there, so I should I should probably just take a look. Yeah, so there's at least one guard over there. Which is not that bad. Because he's just walking in the wrong... Oh, no, he's not. He's walking this way. And I need to be careful, because I know for a fact... Oh, God. Where the hell did you come from? Okay, so plan for this is... I can actually place a stun mine over there, and that's going to take out the... There we go. So Clockwork Soldiers are really vulnerable to the stun mines, which is actually really good. I'm actually going to take this guy out. Indeed. Yeah, so he's really annoyed that we can actually kill all those, but... There we go, that should do it for now. We're actually on the right track now. And we get grenades, that is nice. Was uh, starting to look for those. So the next room is also very interesting. It's uh, it's his private room, which has another clockwork soldier. But if we're quiet, we can't actually activate this thing. And there we have another rewiring tool, which we're going to need in a second. And there's another one over here. So let's take the view outside of his bedroom and move ourselves a bit forward because Kieran Jindals is actually holed up in the laboratory over there and actually we can go over here way down. yes indeed it is Emily yes indeed it is but we can go along the edges and then we get to the outside of his laboratory now the difference in not activating his security system and actually activating it is that if you activate the security beforehand so you know he knows that you're there he gets another clockwork soldier uh protecting him but there's a lot of materials around here that we can use to take out all of that so let's activate the elevator and ride it up to the upper floor i think you'll like what's coming next stranger i will because i don't think i know so we can hide in here and oh I'm I'm hiding at the wrong place, am I? Okay. How did you see me? And now we use the stun mines to take out all of the uh And there goes two. And there we have Kieran Jindosh himself. Okay, how do we want to do this? I think. As. Um. Which clockwork soldiers exactly? You mean the two that I just blew up? I mean, you're talking big for a guy with no security anymore. Um, what do we want to use to take you out? Um, oh, let's do this mano a mano. Oh, in the nuts. Goodbye, Grand Inventor. Goodbye. So there goes Kieran Jindosh with a, a slight tap to the nuts and then a sword to the face. Hmm, interesting. Can I actually loot this guy? Ooh. Ugh. Blood. I don't like blood. Of course I like blood. But of course, we're here for somebody else as well, because Sokolov is still holed up in this place. Uh, we could actually pick up a few notes and find the location that way, but I think it's uh, a lot cooler to just do it, because we know where it is. I'm just going to take a look around in here because this laboratory is filled with lots of uh, interesting pieces of equipment. Among which a few new stun mines that I can use later on. And then we activate this lovely bridge to get us back to the main building. Because uh, Sokolov is holed off 
and the basement of the main building. Uh, but yeah, look at that lovely bridge animation. So the assessment chamber is um, on the other side of this uh, electric fence, but we actually have another way of getting there. But before we do that, I want to check out some of these display cases, because I know one of those has another rewire tool. There we go. So we're moving back through the room with the arc pylon. I think I can actually just avoid it. Oh, it's charging up. For some reason it was charging up, but... Now we get to the other side of the building here. It's making a rune noise or a bone shard noise, but it's right over there. So I think I can just take out this guard because he's sleeping. You think these prices, the man wouldn't keep us waiting. There's only one Kirin Jindosh. He can charge whatever he likes. Besides, you're rich enough to afford a couple of the clockworks. So there's two rich guys just uh, sitting around here. And if we just pull this configuration out of it, we can hide in between here. Oh, how long we waited for this and let's just murder these two people. Because they're just rich aristocrats. And that gets us to a lower level. There's a lonely guard over there. Which I just want to take out. Time to collect this so let's see. Take it. And there we go. A slight kill. Oh, come on. And leg off and head off. Just want to make this a bit more bloody now, don't we? So now we're on the other side of the uh, electric fence, the wall of light. There was actually another garden here. Ah, uh, there we go. Taken out. Don't know where those two actually came from. Uh, must have come from the other side. Um, hi. And as you can hear, we still have another clockwork soldier to deal with. But this one is a bit easier to deal with. So, this elaborate moving labyrinth is where Kirin Jindosh has, um, well, Sokolov locked up. And if I just place a stun mine right over here, I can actually do this. And zap it twice. Goodbye. Yeah, so taking care of that. And now we can just wipe away the board. Stand ourselves in the middle here. And that opens up the room where Sokolov is holed up. We can get another painting here as well. And let's have a little chat with Sokolov. Emily Caldwin. If you're here... Things have gone further than I thought. But Kieran Jindosh? Not a threat anymore. You were an interesting little girl. You've become a fascinating woman. <laughs> Sokolov was actually kind of an antagonist in the previous games, because he was the, uh, also, well, the mad inventor of that game, where he uh, helped out those uh well the enemies of that game um let's head back outside so now we need to carry him because he just falls unconscious again uh but most of the building is cleared out i think we'll have to contend with a few more guards but that's gonna basically be it so let's head outside so if we want to go the sneaky way out i would like to go to the elevator again but we can actually just use this thing to move back up again as well if we just pull this, we move back up with the entire room. And that will get us closer to the exit. Because we're back in this room. And I think I can actually open that up now. Because I've got a little bit of keys. There we go. And this... Yeah, this is the hallway I wanted to go into. So now I can think I can actually just sprint out. Unless they spawned another clockwork soldier over here. But I don't think so. So let's just keep going. And there we go. Right back to the front door. Massacred half the building. And cleared out Sokolov. And after all that, you might think that this is the end. But uh, yeah, they wanted to make sure that you knew that this was going to be the longest chapter of the game. Because we're not done yet. It's when we arrive in Lower Aventa District, we get a not so pleasant surprise. We need to get Anton Sokolov with us again. Kiss your kids goodbye this morning. 
But there's some echoey voices in the background. So, um, there's a few witches in the building now. So, uh, apprentices of Delilah herself, who can actually teleport and shit. So, that's annoying. But, I mean, they're still pretty vulnerable to swords and everything. Just wanna do this stealthily. So let's take out the wall of light. And as you can see, there's a few, uh, well, peculiar women in the courtyard now. And I'm wondering if I can just snipe those off. There we go. That's two. Lost three arrows for that, but you know what? Well worth it. And by the way, we uh, bought the ticket boot key, so we might as well open this up right now. There we go. And open up the giant ass safe in this uh, in this room. And there we go. A nice wanted poster for us, the murderous psychopath Emily Caldwin. So that was two witches, but if I'm not mistaken, there's actually three. Um, just want to check out these guys because, of course, they murdered everybody here. So every all the bit of murdering that I did over here isn't gonna be a problem, I think. So where the hell is that last one? Because I can hear her. Oh my god, she's right above me. And goodbye. And that, I think, is every one of the witches. Because there's three, but of course, since they can uh, teleport and throw projectiles and everything, it's gonna be going to be a bit more annoying if we uh, didn't kill them all. So, let's just hurry back to the boat. And there we go, target rescued, because we uh, reached the boat again, if we can manage to climb over the small railing. Hello, Megan. Here he is. You did it. How is he? He's frail and wounded, but he'll recover. I didn't think it was possible. You must have a story to tell. Yes. I'll hear it back at the ship. Of a lot of indirect murdering. Let's go then. So, two civilians killed. Um, I don't think... Oh yes, yes, those two aristocrats. Yes, indeed. So I got detected 16 times. But I did kill 31 people, so I only got... Ooh. Yeah, I went straight to lethal and assault there. And when we awaken back on the boat, something is not quite right again. So you might think that this is another visit of the stranger who didn't give us our powers. But uh, you know what? I'm going to leave this until next episode. So thank you guys enormously for watching a bloody quick way through Dishonored 2. But we haven't done enough murdering for today. So thanks again enormously for watching. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode of a bloody quick way through Dishonored 2. Goodbye.